The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Goodman Amana and Daikin Brands. Today, we're joined with Shibley Noman. He's the Senior uh, Manager for Product of our furnace line. And Shibley, today you want to talk about gas furnaces, and you call them the big brother in heating. Can you tell me a little bit about the size of the gas market, uh, the gas furnace market here in North America? Yeah, sure, Ben. First of all, thank you so much for having me here. Yes. Uh, yes, this is a good question. We need to understand the furnace market right now. You know, you know the furnace market is split into segments. One is condensing, which we call 90% or higher. Mm -hmm. Another one is non-condensing. Typically, people call it 80%. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the market size, it's about 1.7 million units. I'm going to repeat 1.7 million units in 80% and 1.8 million units in condensing or 90%. Hmm. So if you add it up, it's 3.5 million units. In the dollar amount, it's $4 billion. It's huge. Wow. That is a really big market. It and, is. and I'm sure everybody's fighting for their little piece of the pie that they can have in that market. Um, we're hearing the, that there's going to be some changes coming up, right? In, in 2029, there's some potential changes. We've already had some changes even in some states uh, and even up in Canada, right? Can you talk a little bit about some of the, the changes and the regulations that may be coming in the future? Sure. Yeah. You know the DOE, right? Yeah. Department of Energy. Time to time, they're adjusting the regulations so that energy is better utilized, right? Mm -hmm. So this is not something new. And you're exactly right. On 2028, there will be regulation coming. It's going to be affecting in 2029. In that new regulation, they will be obsoleting the 80% or non-condensing furnaces. Hmm. So there will be no 80%, but it's nothing new. You know, you know, DOE actually did it for a long time ago. In, uh, in 2000, uh, 1987, when the furnace market didn't have any regulation, everyone would sell 75. They decided, you know what, from now on, 78% AFUE. Mm -hmm. And then 2007, and they decided, okay, we'll change the rule again. It become 80%. And now we are hearing, even though it's 2023, they're saying that, no, the minimum would be 95%, just like Canada right now, right? They said all U.S. will have only 95% going forward starting from January 2029. And, and one other thing that well, yeah. I would like to mention that in up to 2058, 2058, because people are concerned that, okay, I understand. When is the next coming then? Is there a chance that's going to obsolete all the uh, furnaces? Well, maybe in the future, but according to the DOE regulation, their calculation, the reason they're proposing this new regulation for reduction in carbon footprint and saving energy and electricity and gas, that's up to 2058. And then you add five years, so about 2065 or so, maybe new regulation would come. Okay. So, I mean, they've definitely got plans a long ways out. Have there been changes in some of the criteria for like programs around Energy Star as well when you look at gas furnaces and, and the different categories that they have and the tiers and, and different things that are happening there? Yes, it's a good question also. The <clears throat> Energy Star, people would like to save gas and money and also get a rebate. That's very good, right? So right now, we know that anything 95% of up, depending on the location, you get a rebate. But you know that our government has a new, um, new rebate program. It's called 25C tax credit. Right, right. You know, the requirements is that your furnace has to be 97%. That's another motivation to go towards uh, condensing furnace. So anyone has a 97% furnace, they can actually get a $600 uh, 25C tax credit. So what about the contractors that are, are thinking, you know, I've been getting that $600 credit for the 95%. I mean, actually going from 95 to 97 is a pretty big jump, isn't it? 
you know, the $600 credit is just for the 97% and up. Right. Which we do offer 97% furnaces. Correct. That's 25C. That's $600. Uh, do you see any changes in that coming up in the future? Well, in the future, nobody knows what happened in the future, right? right. But I did have a discussion with our regulation team mm -hmm. and also some of the folks that I know they work for regulations. What I understood that so far they don't have a program or any plan. For example, is there a chance that's going to be 98% maybe minimum in mm -hmm. future? They don't know it yet. I, I think not because they're putting so much regulation right now especially obsoleting the 80% from 2029, but that might come within 10, 20 years. Who knows? How do you see electrification impacting the gas furnace market? Electrification is a good term. I mean, obviously, everybody wants to be electrified so that it can reduce the greenhouse gases mm -hmm. and also safer, probably, because the people who are scared about combustion, right? But the question and concern right now from my point of view is that having a product that can actually work in a cold climate zone or any zone, for example, as a heat pump, we know that's an alternate option right now. That's why, you know, the title I said that big brother, that's yes, the furnace, yes. right? So I would like to take some time and talk about why it's called big brother, right? Because the heat pump has some kind of limitation. For example, heat pump supply temperature versus a gas furnace supply temperature is 30, 40 degree Fahrenheit delta. Mm -hmm. So a furnace will supply 30, 40 degree higher delta than a heat pump. So, you know, elderly people or anyone, anyone who feel warmer with the furnace, right? And the second thing is we call it the COP, the coefficient mm -hmm. of performance. Yes. A lame term is that, okay, how much money I'm putting it for a system and how much a system is giving me back, not as a, not a form of money, but as a form of cooling or heating. Yes. Right. So if you convert a 95% furnace with a COP, I call it financial COP, that's 3.7. And this 3.7 doesn't change with outside colder temperature. Mm -hmm. The reason that I mentioned, Benny, you know that a heat pump, the lower temperature, the COP drops. Correct. At 55 degree Fahrenheit, actually, it becomes less than 3.7. For a heat pump. Hmm. So ideally, people would definitely would try to use this one, which is the furnace. And furnace don't have, a, a, you know, any defrost cycle, nothing. Okay. So what are the, kind of talking about that, you, you mentioned that we have, you know, over 3 million gas furnaces that are sold every year here in North America. 3.5, I think, is Correct. what you came up with. And, and so do you see that trend staying the same, growing as we get more homes? Do you see it shrinking? You know, how, what, what do you see with those trends? That's a good question. Right now, what's happening right now, I'm going to give some information about what's happening right now. And also I will give some information what happened in the course of time, say, mm -hmm. for example, 10, 12 years. Right now, we're seeing the furnace market is dropping. It's dropping about 19%. Last year, so in this time, it was 25%. So you, you may imagine the, oh, it's dropping 19%, so it's going to go away. But that's not the case. What we are seeing also, it's called another market. It's called dual fuel market. Mm. Dual fuel market is going up. It's a rise about 12%. In, in next year, maybe 14%. So today, just coming from before this podcast, I was actually looking at the number, that what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And you'll be amazed to see that the 97%, the highest AFU furnace, that's going up. That's 17% up. Mm. And we are also seeing something interesting, the AHRI, right? They're introducing a new term in their 210-240 and 2023 publication. In, I think, uh, I remember it's M, in M segment, they talked about a new term. It's called A, instead of AFUE, they call it DFUE. Hmm. Yeah, DFUE means dual fuel utilization energy. They understand the limitation of the, you know, in a heat pump system. So they are supplicating with that. They're supporting with the furnace, for example, the COP, the other things. Mm -hmm. So in the future, they will publish two things, a CR number and a DFUE number for a dual fuel heat pump system. So people will see that how, how it's connecting. So that's going to grow. So if I'm a, an HVAC contractor today, I think one of the challenges, especially in the 80% market, has been 
what about all the homes that I've got where I've got an 80% flue pipe that's going through the center of the home? I have finished basements or I have finished, uh, you know, it's a, on a slab and I don't have a way to get the, uh, the combustion gases out mm -hmm. of the home through the traditional PVC that I would use with a condensing furnace. Uh, what, uh, are, are there any thoughts that you have or that uh, the industry is looking at uh, to address those concerns? Because I think this conversation has come up many times before in the past, and that's always been one of the big uh, challenges that has been raised. Yes, this is from application point of view. This mm -hmm. is concerning. This is a good question also. But before I answer that, okay. I forgot to mention the cumulative rate for the last 12 years is 3.5%. So if you look at the data for furnace for the last 10, 12 years, the furnace market is up 3.5%. Mm. Now let's go back to the question that you asked. That's concerning that installation people will see that, okay, we're well, replacing 80% with a 90%, uh, you know, the way PVC works is on the flu side, mm -hmm. not on the gas side. So the PVC pipe can be single pipe or two pipe system. Mm -hmm. And actually, they are draining the condensation right now for the coil drainage. Some of people has a concern because the condensation water is acidic. Mm -hmm. So can I drain all those things? Yes, there will be required some installation cost. And I did reach out to the installer people that how much do you different between make your difference between 80% and 90%. Typically, I got like 500 and 700 extra dollars. So th that's going to be a little bit more for the end user, the homeowner. Mm -hmm. But understand that what homeowner is getting, they're getting a 95% and up. If they get 97%, they get $600 right away as a tax credit. All right. And then also be between the 80% and 95 or 97%, they're, at, they're helping the environment by reducing 16 to 20% carbon footprint and also saving their gas and the electricity and also the comfort. So the payback period is less than a year or so paying that much. Okay. Well, well tell me, we've talked about the trends, we've talked about uh, the application, we've talked about a lot of different things. Why in the world should a contractor look to Daikin for their gas furnaces versus all of the other choices they have? I'm going to ask you the same question. Why not? <laughs> why not? The reason is, why not the reason? The reason is Daikin furnaces are unique. Daikin, Goodman, Amana furnaces are unique in the way that they're designed. Obviously, we have the tube design. Now, mm -hmm. tubular design, people are very common in understanding that it's better than other type of design, for example, clamshell. But our design has some design criteria. What is that? That means we run a certain specific temperature on the material. So, for example, our Goodman is aluminized. Mm -hmm. Daikin and Amana is stainless steel. So there is a limitation of the temperature for the material that we stand. For example, aluminized, it can have 950. Beyond 950, if you go there, then there will be reverse reaction. The substance is going to melt into and it's going to create portions, cracking other problems. We don't do that. We go 950, even though AHRI and NZ2147 says you can go 1030. So that's one of the big differences. Okay. And that's why we have a very higher life cycle. We also test it for a life cycle. And you know that we, we have done the Amana. Mm -hmm. It's like 3 million cycles. Imagine 3 million cycles, about 200 years of real-time <laughs> use. <laughs> so we give the best warranty also. The best warranty you give because the design is designed for that. It's not that let's give the best warranty, but that's the design. And also, if you look at our feedback, talk to the installer guy, they will say that this is robust enough for a heat and a furnace to supply and sustain. I think there's some other design things that uh, you've put into the equipment as well. When we take a look at, uh, you know, where we've stood, you continue to have the slope design within our equipment, which uh, does not allow us to have the, the multi-position equipment that uh, some of the other manufacturers have. Why is that a benefit? Yeah, you mentioned is a great, great point that you mentioned, mm -hmm. especially now that we know we are going to the condensing furnace segment. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have very unique things. You mentioned about ours is three-way. Some of the competitors has four-way. If you have a four-way, you cannot have a slope. Mm -hmm. We have, we have three-way. The burden is on us because we are maintaining two SKUs. One is for the three-way outflow, another is three-way downflow. When you have a slope, the condensation water can get out, especially for the vertical installation. Also think about it for a condensing furnace, there is a secondary heat exchange. Those tubes material are unique and very important. 
we have a special materials called L294C. Mm. If you look at our competitors, they have duplex. Now, both are stainless steel. The question would may come in your head or people might, what, what, what is the difference in L294C? Well, the difference is very simple, the 29. We have 29% chromium. The duplex has only 22%. I always ask this question, Ben, you know that 29 mm -hmm. minus 22 is how much? <laughs> Seven. Seven. <laughs> yes. So if you remember seven, seven percent more chromium is going to give you more life, 34 percent more life for your furnace. Mm. Also, we have a smaller diameter tubes for higher turbulence. Higher turbulence meaning the secondary operation of the heat exchange is going to be faster. It's going to give you efficiency. You have to make sure your primary and the secondary both work better to have your full efficiency or AFUE. A lot of competitors, they've decided to go with, they may have tubular designs, but they decide to go with smaller tubes, smaller BTU burners. Uh, we have a, a larger BTU burner, which again, uh, that could give us less flexibility, right? In, in the, the sizes that we have. Why is it better to have a larger burner versus a smaller burner uh, and, uh, and a larger tube versus a smaller tube? Yeah. This is another point. And some of our competitors do have 11,000 BTU burners. We have 20,000 BTU burners. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the industry, most of them has it, this 200, I mean, 20,000 BTU burners. The reason is very simple. Because nowadays, people are moving towards the modulation type of furnace or two-stage instead of single stage. When you go to lower stage, your BTU drops. For example, if you have 100,000 BTU, you go 50% reduction that 50,000 BTU. Mm -hmm. At that lower BTU rate, you want to maintain a very stable flame. Stable flame, and you don't want the gas valve orifice to be blocked by anything, any debris or anything. A smaller BTU furnace, a smaller BTU burner will have a very much lower BTU. Mm. So there's more chance going to be clogged, blocked. So there will be lots of service calls not working. Ours is robust enough. That's why you might see that in the future, people may go again to 20 or 25,000 BTU burner uh, power burners for tubes. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the future. I know I always sit, love talking to you about combustion. I mean, you're just a wealth of knowledge and information. Uh, and, and you've thrown out some terms. Uh, don't even know if you want me to call these things out, but I, I will anyways. Uh, so you've talked about virtual 90s. You've talked about a, a furnace that could actually be more than 100% efficient, which how in the world could that be? Uh, you know, what are some stuff that's coming in the future? And, 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 you know, what are some things that you kind of think uh, where the industry may be heading, where Daikin may be heading uh, in terms of gas furnaces? Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for those comments. <laughs> yeah, the future is, future is with us, whatever we can design. And, yes, it's possible. Technically, it's possible. We can have higher efficiency. We are talking about converting chemical energy into heat energy and extracting that. Sometimes, depending on the flame temperatures, I don't want to go too technical, but yeah. depending on the flame temperature, you can extract more heat out of it. But for as a company ourselves, we are, will be launching next year a new furnace. New furnace in a sense of that we all heard about the A2L regulation. Mm -hmm. We know the refrigerant is changing to A2L type for R32, 454B. Mm -hmm. These are A2L. That requires a mitigation process from your you know, air handler or the furnace itself or air handler because it has a blower. So we are changing the PCB. So the PCB will have an option in case of any leakage in the coil segment or anywhere. It's going to start running that case. We call it A2L sensing furnace. We're actually changing the nomenclature a little bit so that we can differentiate between 410 compliance and A2L. By the way, this A2L uh, sensing furnace will also work with 410. No, that's great. Do you want to comment on any of the other things I talked about as far as the, uh, the virtual 90 or the uh, going beyond 100%? Yes, virtual 90 was a concept, still is a concept that can we take some type of 80% non condensing furnace and extract efficiency out of it. So that's the intention. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot disclose there are some <laughs> secrets going yes, on right yes. now, but yes, Daiken is always being the leader of innovation. and. Uh, as you know me, right, I'm working with engineering and all their cross-functional team to mm -hmm. come up with the next-gen platform. That I, 